lives at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, nearly 11 kilometers below the surface, where light doesn't exist and pressure could crush your bones like dry branches. The Mariana Trench harbors things that shouldn't be there. Deformed remains of unknown creatures, animal bodies twisted by a force that obeys no natural laws, footprints too large to belong to anything we can classify. What else lurks in that blackness? Some claim to have recorded sounds that match no known species. Others speak of shadows whose movements are too precise to be accidental. Not all findings have come to light, and those that have, perhaps you'd rather not meet them. This is a journey into the depths of the unknown, where we'll explore the scientific discoveries buried in this abyss. Located at the western tip of the Pacific Ocean, east of the Mariana Islands, and not far from the island of Guam, the Mariana Trench is not a simple crack in the seafloor. It is the deepest wound the Earth has ever opened in its own skin. There, in a remote corner that almost no human being will ever see, the bluest waters on the surface become a liquid precipice that descends into a realm of absolute darkness. From the deck of a ship, nothing betrays the monstrosity that hides beneath the waves. An invisible void that waits, patiently, to devour everything that dares to fall into it. The Mariana Trench was not born from one day to the next. It is deeper than Mount Everest in reverse, tearing apart the crust of our planet. But when did it all start? What invisible forces were able to tear a piece of the planet and sink it to that depth? More than 150 million years ago, the ocean was waging a silent battle against itself. Tectonic plates collided and devoured each other like hungry beasts. The vast, ruthless Pacific Plate began to slide under the Mariana Plate in a relentless process called subduction. It was not a quick movement. It was a slow process a constant pressure, like an executioner tightening the noose little by little, year after year, century after century. Over millions of years, this geological dance descended to inconceivable depths. Geologists know that the trench is still alive today. The plates still move, just a few centimeters per year, but that slowness is only an illusion of calm. Every inch is a force capable of lifting mountains or sinking entire continents. One day, the entire map of the Pacific could change forever. Around it, sea mounts, dormant volcanoes and mudfields stretch out like an alien landscape. Down there, silence is not peace. It is a perpetual tension. The entire planet breathes through its faults, and the Mariana Trench is a dark lung that breathes magma, gases, and mysteries. The lowest point of the pit, known as the Challenger Deep, plunges to about 10,984 meters below sea level. Can you imagine the absolute darkness that exists there? Not the gloom of a windowless room, but a blackness that has reigned untouched for eons, where time seems suspended. But that depth is not just a vacuum. The pressure in the Challenger Deep reaches more than a thousand times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. If for some reason, one day a human got there, he would be crushed in less than a second. His bones would burst, his lungs would collapse, the flesh would melt into the icy water before his mind even understood what was happening. And yet, in that brutal realm, life has found ways to resist, or perhaps to mutate into something we shouldn't find. Under 11 kilometers of water, where the light has never touched the walls of the abyss, things have been found that seem to escape all logic. We're not just talking about strange creatures, but of something that at first glance seems to be born of ancient nightmares. The first manned and unmanned missions that descended to the Mariana Trench returned images and data that shook scientists and anyone who dared to look at them. 
down there, in a pressure of more than 1,086 atmospheres, creatures with translucent bodies float like specters, and others, with rough skins and oversized eyes, seem ready to hunt in absolute darkness. Among the most shocking finds is the giant amphipod, a crustacean similar to a shrimp, but about the size of a human arm. Its exoskeleton is full of heavy metals, absorbed from the water over centuries, as if the abyss itself had shielded it to resist. Holothurius have also been observed, i.e. sea cucumbers, that, despite their harmless appearance, glide over the mud at temperatures close to zero degrees, feeding on the remains of organisms that descend from the surface remains that sometimes include entire bodies of fish that have fallen. But not everything that has been seen has an immediate scientific explanation. In unofficial expeditions and leaked recordings, elongated shadows are mentioned that cross in front of the cameras in a matter of seconds, too fast to be known giant squids. Some researchers speak of serpentine shapes of more than 20 meters, with a movement reminiscent of a heartbeat, could they be surviving creatures from prehistoric eras, as if the Jurassic had left a last refuge in this liquid tomb? Fear increases when we remember that even in total blackness, some of these species produce their own light. The phenomenon of bioluminescence not only serves to attract prey, but also to intimidate or confuse predators. Imagine a creature that lights up in blue or green, flashes in the midst of eternal darkness, revealing for an instant teeth like needles, and then disappearing forever. Even more disturbing was the discovery of remains of human objects in places where they should never be. Plastic bags at a depth of almost 11,000 meters, synthetic fibers and oxidized metal fragments that do not belong to any known expedition. How did they get there? Every descent into the Mariana Trench is a risk not just because of the pressure and the darkness, but because of the unknown. The sensors have recorded sounds whose frequency and pattern do not match any identified species. One of them, known as the Bloop in other ocean regions, had a similar record near the Marianas, a deep, prolonged wail, as if something gigantic had exhaled from the bottom, releasing centuries of silence in a single breath. The sound, picked up by hydrophones hundreds of miles away, was so powerful that it pierced layers of water and rock. Experts suggest it could have been a geological phenomenon, perhaps the colossal crack of a tectonic plate, or the bursting of a gas pocket trapped under the seafloor. But others, listening to the recording carefully, swear to distinguish a rhythm a cadence too organic to be just random. Was it the echo of a body in motion, or the call of something that lives beyond our reach? Although we still do not have all the answers, there is a question that continues to circulate in the heads of scientists and researchers around the world. How is it possible that life exists in that place? On the surface, life needs sun, in the Mariana Trench, the sun does not exist. There are no sunrises, no warm currents, and no algae to paint the water green. There is only a perpetual night and a cold that bites the bones. And yet, it survives. How? What does life feed on in a place where there seems to be nothing? The answer lies in a constant rain, but not of water, but of death. Scientists call it marine snow a slow descent of organic fragments from the surface. Detached scales, fish carcasses, droppings, algae remains and dead microorganisms that float downward for days or weeks until they fall like dust on the muddy bottom. It is a slow, cold, miserable banquet, but enough to keep thousands of creatures alive. But not everything depends on the carrion that falls from above. At some points in the trench, hydrothermal springs spit minerals and chemical compounds from the bowels of the planet. Their life feeds on pure chemistry. Bacteria capable of devouring sulfur, methane or iron 
form the basis of an ecosystem that does not need sunlight. It's chemosynthesis, a biochemical miracle that turns poison into sustenance and that feeds giant tube worms, mollusks without mouths or stomachs, and crustaceans that seem to have been designed to survive in hell. At these depths, competition is fierce. Nothing is wasted. A snailfish with its soft, translucent body can gobble up entire prey, including bones, in a matter of seconds. Certain sea cucumbers sweep the bottom with a voracity that would make any land animal tremble, swallowing mud and filtering out any edible particles. Even death is recycled. A creature's corpse becomes the home and food for hundreds of other life forms, from microscopic bacteria to dog-sized predators. And yet, this struggle is not only physical. It is a battle against an environment that does not forgive a single mistake. The pressure of more than a thousand atmospheres forces bodies to be flexible with no air cavities that can collapse. The temperature is barely far from zero degrees, forcing each cell to adapt so as not to crystallize into life. Science still doesn't fully understand the biochemistry of these creatures. Many use enzymes and proteins that do not exist in any surface species. Others have cell membranes reinforced with special molecules so that water does not crush them from the inside. It is as if each organism had been designed by the abyss itself, patiently shaped over millions of years so that only the most adapted could exist here. In fact, there was a time when mutant-like creatures lived on our planet. If you want to see more about this, I will leave you a video that I have already uploaded above. Now, we will delve into the most daring expeditions where machines and humans braved pressure, cold, and the unknown, and not everyone came back with the answers they were looking for. Exploring the Mariana Trench is like trying to get into the throat of a sleeping monster, knowing that if it wakes up, you won't make it out alive. And yet, we have tried a few times. Because the truth is that, despite all our technology, despite centuries of sailing the seas, we have seen only a glimpse of what is hidden in that abyss. The first real contact with the bottom of the trench was in 1960, when the submarine Trieste, manned by Jacques Picard and Don Walsh, descended into the Challenger Deep. It took them almost five hours to reach the bottom, inside a steel sphere just over two meters in diameter, without wide windows or sophisticated cameras like today's. There, in total darkness and under pressure capable of destroying a modern submarine, they remained for only 20 minutes before starting the ascent. What they saw was a landscape of mud and darkness. And yet, they detected a flatfish proof that life could exist where logic said it couldn't. It took more than 50 years before anyone hit rock bottom again. In 2012, filmmaker and explorer James Cameron descended alone on the Deep Sea Challenger. Its vertical capsule, designed to withstand more than a thousand atmospheres of pressure, sank to more than 10,900 meters. Cameron spent hours filming and taking samples, revealing that the background was not a barren desert, but an ecosystem with strange translucent creatures, giant amphipods, and microbes unknown to science. Since then, we've sent robots and remotely operated vehicles, such as the Nereus and DSV limiting factor, which have captured images and data in never-before-seen detail, but here's the inconvenient truth. Less than 1% of the Mariana Trench has been directly explored. The rest remains an absolute mystery. To put it in perspective, we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the depths of our own planet. Why so little? Because the grave is not a place that allows itself to be conquered. The pressure is so extreme that any structural failure means an instant implosion. The cold can kill electronics. Perpetual darkness means that powerful lighting systems must be used, but artificial light only reaches a few meters 
and every minute down there costs millions of dollars in technology, logistics, and human risk. Still, technological advances offer new doors. Ultra-resistant materials, such as titanium alloys and special ceramics, promise safer and lighter submersibles. Autonomous underwater drones could map the trench without a crew, sending back data in real time. They are even studying nanorobots capable of entering impossible areas, feeding on currents to operate for months without recharging. But here the uncomfortable question arises, should we do it? Each expedition carries with it the risk of altering an ecosystem that has remained isolated for millions of years. A light bulb that is too powerful, an electric shock or even the accidental introduction of surface bacteria could forever change the biology of a place that never asked us to visit. And if we discover something, will we be prepared to handle it? Scientists launch hypotheses that sound like science fiction, life forms that use metals instead of calcium to form their structures, organisms that breathe toxic compounds for us, or even intelligent species adapted to total darkness. Each descent into the Mariana Trench is a pulse between curiosity and fear. We want to know, but we know that knowledge has a price. History tells us that humanity rarely stops in the face of the unknown. We have always opened the doors, even when disaster awaited behind. Perhaps the real dilemma is not simply whether we have the technical capacity to explore the Mariana Trench, but whether we are prepared, as a species, to face the consequences of what we might discover there. The reality is that much of the Earth remains uncharted territory, where nature has written its own history without our intervention. Entering that abyss would not only be a scientific expedition, but an encounter with the unknown in its purest form, a reminder that we are still apprentices in this vast natural laboratory. In the unfathomable depths of the ocean, beyond the light and the usual reach of our curiosity, lurk secrets that could completely redefine our view of the world and our place in it. Perhaps before we descend to those depths, we should ask ourselves if we are ready to accept that we are not the owners of the planet, but just visitors in a world much older, more mysterious and more powerful than we imagine.